So a style that I see getting more popular these days is the hoppy American Pilsner, a West Coast Pilsner. It's a style that combines the drinkability of a Pilsner beer with the hoppy goodness of something like an IPA or pale ale. Well, I was involved with another collaboration to brew a West Coast Pilsner with a commercial beer, and this one, it turned out great. As always, I appreciate you stopping by Cascades Homebrew. My name is Brent. Well, it's pretty darn hot out here today. It's pushing 100 degrees and it's pretty humid, but I figured I'd try to get out of my basement while well, I got some light, get some time. Hey, nothing better on a hot day than drinking a nice refreshing Pilsner. In this case, it's a hoppy Pilsner, a West Coast Pilsner. So I did that first collaboration, my last video. We had some oxidation issues. Those are really my fault, not the brewery. But this one, well, let's just crack this one open. Let's prove to you, this is a beautiful looking beer. It's pretty hot and humid out here. Definitely gonna get some condensation on the, on the glass. This one is a nice, beautiful, pretty looking beer. All right, so recap, how did we get here? So around 2022, I've seen a lot of attention to cold IPAs. It sounded like a great idea, but I thought, hey, could I make a cold pale ale? I call it cool pale ale. So basically, just trying to pull the ABV down closer to the 5% range, but still keep a lot of that light body and the hoppy goodness of a cold IPA. So I brewed that batch. A lot of my friends really liked it. So about that time I heard the term West Coast Pilsner, which to me sounded like a pretty good fit for the time of style I was trying to brew. Well, I'm the president of the Warthogs Homebrew Club and we had our 30th anniversary coming up. We thought we'd do a collaboration. So I decided I would brew a second batch of that West Coast Pilsner and I would take that to the brewery and let them decide, is this a brew they'd wanna do? Well, the brewery Fabio, he said, yeah, that would be a great one. Well, in the meantime, my friends at Nova Homebrew were doing a collaboration for the American Craft Beer Week with Old Ox Brewery, and they wanted me to brew that out there. So that was that last collaboration. So where the collaboration at Old Ox Brewery was a 15-gallon batch where some home brewers came in. We used a home brewing setup, and we did all the work ourselves, including the transfer into the keg where I think the oxidation occurred. Well, this time, we're brewing a 12-barrel batch on the professional brewing system there at Dynasty Brewing. In this case, a bunch of people from the club came in. We helped out on the brew day. I came back and helped out in packaging. But Fabio and the crew there at Dynasty, they handled the fermentation, the dry hop, the packaging, kegging, all those type of steps. But as far as the brew day on this batch goes, Dynasty, just a few miles down the road from Old Docks. So off towards the brewery I went. Red buds and apple trees, no longer flowering, but, but the data centers, yeah, they're still here. It's probably a few more since the last time I filmed. I give a wave to my water treatment plant as I pass by Loudon Water. Then I make a right to get into Dynasty. So like Dynasty and Old Ox, many of the breweries in the area are tucked away in these small mixed use commercial complexes. So if you've never brewed at a commercial brewery, it's definitely an interesting and educational opportunity. This is my second time brewing here with Dynasty and I've helped out at a couple other breweries. Overall, I find the process is just remarkably similar to home brewing. I think one of the biggest differences is just the scale. How much time it takes, say, to transfer the grain, to mash in, to heat it up, then to transfer it out and whirlpool and chill it. So a lot of the steps are the same. And then I find like, say, a mash, maybe you only mash it for 30 minutes, but the whole process may take like two hours. So as we get on to brewing, it starts with milling the grain. So at Dynasty, we have to load the individual bags into the mill so on the commercial scale, grain tends to be in full bags, maybe with half bags, especially malt thrown in. So the recipe today called for 650 pounds of Pilsner malt, half a bag or 27 pounds of acidulated malt, one bag or 55 pounds of chip malt. There's an auger that transfers the milled grain back from the mill area into the mash tun. It mixes hot water as it enters the mash tun. We just need to keep an eye on the process and spread the grain out a bit. So the system at Dynasty is basically a four vessel system. I think, is the hot liquor tank considered a separate vessel on the commercial side? I know on the homebrew side, a three vessel system has a hot liquor tank. But looking at this system, in the back there is the hot liquor tank that holds the hot water. There's the mash tun that handles the mash, the lauder, and the sparge. And then there's a separate kettle for the boil. So looking in the back is the whirlpool vessel. It's up above the hot liquor tank. So they're kind of like one combined unit. After the mash, the runnings are transferred into the boil kettle. The grain bed is sparged using a rotating spray arm. 
Once the wort is up to a boil, we add in the hops. The total hop load for this bill is a half pound of Simcoe at 60 minutes, two and a half pounds of Simcoe at 10 minutes, three pounds of Citra at Whirlpool, and two pounds of Simcoe at Whirlpool. There's a Citra and a dry hop, but I'm not quite sure the exact amount. I'll have to check on that. The recipe sheet said the target original gravity was 1047. It might have came up a little above that and the bitterness was calculated 39 IBUs. During the boil, we get the fun task of cleaning out all the spent grain from the mash tun. We cart the wet grain to bins where it's picked up by a local farmer. This is a lot more work than just dumping a brew bag into the compost heap. Once the boil is done, the wort is transferred into the Whirlpool vessel. There, it gets five pound hop addition. Here, you can see that combo hot liquor tank Whirlpool vessel a little better. I suspect this old system was designed before adding a bunch of hops into the Whirlpool was common practice like it is to with today's IPAs. So by the way, Jason, who's up there on the ladder, he won a gold medal at the 2023 National Homebrew Competition. He's a pretty darn good brewer. After the Whirlpool, the wort is transferred through the heat exchanger and into a fermenter. Yeast had already been transferred into the fermenter from another lager that was just winding down. Fabio, he took care of the fermenting, dry hopping, transferring the beer into the serving tanks. I came back a few weeks later to help out with the canning process. Here are the first cans of the Collaboration West Coast Pilsner coming off the line. So I count 48 cases there, and that's over a thousand cans filled. So a while later, I saw some cans on the shelf at the local craft beer store. All right, so what about the beer? Hey, first off, I want to say I really like the can design. They did a pretty good job highlighting both Dynasty, the style of the beer, and also the Warthogs Homebrew Club from the 30th anniversary label. Shout out to the designer there. So as far as appearance, my glass is really sweating a lot today, but it's definitely a nice crystal clear, a light color, uh, just a kind of a dark straw color maybe. I wouldn't call it dark enough to say it's golden. It's got a nice white head, it's fairly persistent, good lacing. I'm not sure if the chipmunk that was added really adds any, anything, but that's uh, why Fabio said he added it. What about you? Do you use chip malt in your beers? I know the guys up at Sapwood Cellars kind of promoted it, but I can't hardly find it at my local homebrew shop, so I have not tried it myself. All right, well, let's see how the beer really is. Aroma, it's got some nice hoppy aroma. I get maybe a little bit of a kind of a malt sweetness too, but definitely dominated by the hops. This is, again, I know it's, you know, Citra and uh, Simcoe in it, so that's what I'm looking for. Nice, light, refreshing. But also it's got, got the backbone, some bitterness backbone, a lot of hop flavor. I think it's just a well-executed version of the style, just that good combination, you know, on a hot day like this. Um, let me top her up a little bit. I'm going to enjoy drinking this. So my only probably knock on the specific execution of this one, the ABV, I think it's at 5.7%. So 5.7, it's really kind of pushing in the line between an, an IPA. So I know Dynasty Brewing has another popular kind of dry hop Pilsner that's in the 5.6%, their uh, El Supremo Pilsner. It's a really solid beer. So maybe just that's the range that uh, Fabio was shooting for, or maybe just got a little higher a gravity or a little more attenuation. So I think my preference for the style, maybe we did push it closer to that 5%, maybe 5.2%, maybe even below 5%, just in that Pilsner range to get the drinkability, just so you can drink on a hot day, drink a couple of them. What about you? Have you tried brewing a beer like this? What did your recipe look like? What kind of hops did you find work well in the style? So if you haven't brewed something like this, I definitely encourage you. You know, I'm not a huge, say, Pilsner fan. I think I'm just not a huge fan of a lot of like the land race German hops. Well, this kind of opened my eyes. You can really push these, any hops in here. You can increase the bitterness, lower the bitterness, have a lot of hop flavor, kind of minimize the hop flavor. But just combining the light, crisp Pilsner lager drinking character with some hoppy goodness, to me, it's a great style. I could definitely see why these are getting more popular. And I suspect you're gonna start seeing more and more of these on tap in your local tap room. So whatever you call the style, West Coast Pilsner, Cold Pale Ale, hey, I just encourage you to drink it. Check out my other video where I brewed the first one. Check out my collaboration video and make sure you get to work brewing your own batch. Cheers.